Welcome to another edition of Club Brayman Spotlight. I'm Danny Bayard, your host from Brayman Motorcars, and I've got my pal Larry Podwell from iHeartRadio. Danny, it's always great to see you. Larry, I think we're going to undo mask the mask because mask uh, we are socially distanced as per the CDC guidelines. CDC compliance. What do we have tonight? Got a great show. We're going to kick off. Remember we did a party about a year ago with the Palm Beach the County Schools? Yes. And yes. Uh, phenomenal. And will bring us back to uh, uh, a live performance. Fabulous. Can't wait. Like. Uh, tell me about, uh, you were at a haunted house? Uh, a haunted house turned restaurant of all things. So you're going to love this segment. Great food, wow. great drink, and some unexpected guests, maybe. I'm sure, always. <laughs> we also went to a, uh, get this, I had to be blindfolded and taken to this uh, <laughs> fine arts conservancy where they restore <laughs> incredibly expensive art. Uh, I can't even disclose the location, but that blindfolded. was... Blindfolded. <clears throat> Very was, interesting. It was fabulous <laughs> and it was fascinating. And by the way, I've got a uh, little surprise for you. And we've got another flashback. A flashback. I'm not going to tell you what it is until later. I know what it is, <laughs> but uh, you guys are going to love it. I may mix it up for you. So, Larry, let's go to the first segment. It's the Casey Rains Band. They sent us a video, and it was from the Club Raymond Performance Theater's event for teachers in Palm Beach County. Let's roll that. Wow, those great sounds. Did you notice where they were filming at? Big Dog Ranch, Danny. They do Home, incredible. Local, local, local. Incredible uh, work for the community yeah. and for the pets around. So, this is the time that we're going to announce the winner to the quizzes last week. Uh, Joseph. You got Joseph. Boy. You go. FedEx, UPS, <laughs> Brayman, delivery guy. And Don't camera. quit your daytime job. You could be our next king of queens. Hey, I want him full time. You could go part time okay. to those other places. You got The it. envelope, please. Uh, Four passes to the Palm Beach Zoo. I'll let you do the honors. Okay, Danny, I'll take over. And the okay. winners are, for a family four-pack to the Palm Beach Zoo, 
Leslie Kaufman. Fabulous. Mai Tai. Whoa, this is not a bar, Larry. It, <laughs> I'd, like that, a, I'd like a nice Mai Tai is that a after person? hanging out with you. But the winner, the name is Mai Tai. Fabulous. Congratulations, Mai Tai. Okay. Can I get up? Gina Shears and the fourth winner, Scott Silvers. Each, again, a family four pack to the Palm Beach Zoo. Larry, congratulations to the winners. But this week, at the end of the show, we'll tell you how to win one of 20 prizes from Brayman Motorcars. And guess what's next? Very exciting. We got a video coming up. That's right. Back I, at your, uh, again, you have all the fun. You're at some haunted house now. This is a payback. After right? the you memory last all week, the restaurants, I, I got the restaurants this I week. I might have received a few, you know, nice assignments from Ron Brooks in the past, but uh, let's enjoy Danny and the haunted house. You better be nice to him in the future, or else you know you're going to go on one of those assignments. I'll be with anyway. Joe. I'll be with Joseph on the truck. <laughs> The UPS, that's right. <laughs> Listen, I went to this fabulous home. It's from the 1920s. Uh, great food, great drinks, and some surprise guests because it's supposedly haunted. Without further ado, the Death or Glory Bar. Watch this segment. Hi, I'm Danny Bayard from Club Brayman Spotlight. Welcome to another edition. And I'm sitting in the most gracious, comfortable home there is. It's an old home from 1925 with Annie Blake. Danny, nice to see you. Owner of Death and Glory Restaurant. And you have got to come to this place. This is, it's, it's very unique. So I'm going to ask you some questions. Sure. When did you guys start this restaurant? So Death or Glory opened in April of 2017. And I understand that this particular home has a really cool, unique history. Tell us about that. It does. Uh, this is the old Falcon House. It's historic. It was built in 1925 by E.C. Hall, who built the Delray Theater. In the early 1940s, he sold the house to the Falcon family, and the Falcon family lived there for, I believe, nearly 50 years. They owned Falcon Drugs on Atlantic Avenue. Okay, and at one point, it was converted to a restaurant instead of a home. Right. So I believe in the early to mid 90s, it was converted to an Italian restaurant. Um, and then it was most sort of known for in the past, a bar called the Falcon House and Restaurant, okay. which we like to play, play a little homage to here as well. Um, and then it was a few restaurants after that. And now it's us. You have got to see the photos on the wall as originals of the original family. I think that like these photos, which you guys can't see, but it'll be coming up soon. Uh, who are they? So we have a lot of our family in, um, in this house. I think a lot of what my business partner, Amy Harrison, and I thought in terms of bringing this house back to life was to bring it back to the era in which it shined the best, right? So um, she and, and my family both keep great historical records, and so we had a lot of pictures from the late 1920s until the early 1940s, and so we put our families up, her cousin, her parents, her grandparents, my aunt, and a number of my family and cousins as well. If you love antique photos, you got to come to this place. Now, tell me about Annie. She's not here today, but Amy, you, yeah. Amy I'm sorry. And yeah. you guys met how? Amy and I met uh, six or seven years ago at a conference called Tales of the Cocktail in New Orleans. It's a cocktail convention for the trade every year. About 20,000 cocktail bartenders come out and spend the week together and learn and drink and have a great time. And um, she had owned Creepy Tiki in Fort Lauderdale at that time. And my boss at Cocktail Kingdom, where I also work, had uh, mentioned that she and I should meet. And so we hooked up with Tales of the Cocktail. I thought she was a little too cool for me. And so it took a minute for and anyone who knows Amy. She's definitely cooler than I am. Uh, um, it took a minute, but we ended up, we kept reconnecting, running in the same circles and realized we had a lot more in common than we thought. Hard to imagine anybody cooler than you are, but we'll, <laughs> we'll definitely hard. have to meet Annie. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the food. So our food is, uh, Chef Alex Arlinga uh, curates our menu. He's incredibly talented. And he, um, we do new American food, some global influences, seasonal food. We have a small menu. We're in a 100-year-old home, so we have a small kitchen. Um, but if anyone were to walk around and look, our freezer is not much bigger than the freezer you'd have in your house. Wow. So everything's That's fresh. Challenging. Yeah, yes. everything's fresh, which is nice. So while we don't have a million things, we have something for everyone, and you, you know that it's not been sitting in the back freezer for six months, right? And I want you to tell us about these new drinks that you guys have. Uh, it actually invented during the COVID crisis. Yeah, we did. So um, obviously we've had to pivot quite a bit with the coronavirus this year. And to-go cocktails have been really fun for us, for people to be able to come and have a cocktail with 
without having to fear sitting close to people, as well as, um, you know, us to reconnect with our guests who maybe don't feel like going out. And so we made these boozy shakes when everything first shut down, which were so much fun. And I couldn't believe how many people needed comfort food, right? <laughs> um, now that we're into summer, though, we've got these fabulous uh, Nonino spritzers which are fantastic. It's a, it's a new Nonino aperitivo. It's a botanical, it's low ABV, and it also has some club soda and some, some bubbles in there. And we have uh, grapefruit and mint, thyme and lemon and strawberry and basil flavors. They're $7 and they stand up on their own. They come in this cute little package um, and they're super refreshing. refreshing. They look refreshing, they, they are. look yummy. Now, Death and Glory is a COVID-19 compliant restaurant. And uh, they got these great little posters. I picked one up. It's a PSA announcement. Pants are optional. Masks aren't. Show your ass, but don't be one. So <laughs> That's right. We, we were compliant. We got here with masks. We're socially distanced. And, uh, you know, I really want to congratulate you for being an entrepreneur during this. You know, Thank you. I see social Thank distancing. You. I see the tables are arranged differently. Yes. You've got some uh, some blow-up dolls for the oh, ones yeah. that can or cannot. Yeah, the little Our friends there. Our friends. Yeah, so instead They're of having it cordoned bar. off in police tape, they've got yeah. uh, uh, little friends uh, all over the seats. And yeah. I see, hear yeah. about friends. And yes. I've heard this. Now, you got to confirm it for me. Is this place haunted? Yeah, I mean, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. You can't have a nearly 100-year-old house without walls that talk, right? Um, we've, had, we've had quite a few things. Um, probably the biggest one, a lot of my staff has been here since day one. And uh, we have glasses in the back at the server station. And after closing, more than one of them have seen glasses fly straight across the oh room. Oh my gosh. What about um, yourself? Have you ever seen anything kind of creepy? Yeah, I mean, the doors open and close fairly often, more often than you'd probably feel comfortable with if you were terribly afraid of ghosts. Um, but Amy and I, honestly, like, I wish these walls could talk. And, you know, whoever's here hanging out with us, we feel like they've got a home and they should stay stick around and and they're like good to that. us and we're cool to them it's yeah. part of the uniqueness of this yeah, particular sure. location for and sure. venue it's got a lot of history and so i'm sure somebody plus it's a cool little house who wouldn't want to stick around talk to us about the different rooms so um one of the things i like about death or glory the best actually is that every little place feels different um so we have our dining room, which feels a little bit more formal. Then we have our lounge, which feels, uh, we like it to feel like kind of a 1920, 1930s living room. We have our in-house, our falcon room, which is our private in-house dining room with its beautiful old curtains. And then outside, we have our patio seating out front. But then if you sneak around the back of the house and you go through the carport, we have our tiki bar in the back, which is maybe my favorite place in the bar. I, I think it's so cool. You go through yeah. each room. They each have a personality. They do. I definitely want they you do. guys to get a close-up of this old fireplace, the original fireplace of what I understand. Yes, of it the was house. the original fireplace in the house. It, it doesn't work anymore, but um, I'm sure it, it heated up many a pot in its day. I bet. Yeah. I bet. So, Death and Glory, located off of Federal Highway and Northeast 6th Street. Is that correct? Northeast 6th Avenue at 1st Street. Northeast 6th Avenue is Federal Highway here in Delray, Federal Highway North, and we're just a block north of Atlantic. And tell us when you're open. We are open Tuesday through Sunday uh, from 12 to 11 for takeout and from 4 to 11 for uh, in-house dining. Obviously, we're limited seating inside, socially distanced outside. We have all the hand sanitizers and all of the things to make Obviously. people feel comfortable. I see it all over. Um, if you don't have a mask, we'll be happy to give you one. Well, there you go. And, um, and we hope to see you. And we're www.deathorglorybar.com. Uh, you can also order online for pickup uh, or delivery. And do you and, have a phone uh, number you want cocktails. to tell us about? Absolutely. 561-808-8814. You can always also email me, Annie, A-N-N-I-E, at deathorglorybar.com. All right. So we've got all that contact information right there scrolling on the screen. And don't forget, we've got a very special uh, Club Brayman discount. I hope to see you guys. All right. What yeah. is that Club Brayman discount anyway? It is 15% discount Ooh. for everything, for everybody who comes in. Yeah, right. we'd love to see you. Everybody who drives a Brayman car, I know I do. All right, I tell me about BMW. your Brayman car. So I'm on my second 230i BMW, um, my little, I call it my Barbie car, because <laughs> it feels like a Barbie car to me. I had white before, and now I'm on silver. Um, both convertibles? Both convertibles. Wow, okay. Yeah. The 230 and is stuck. It's, I love that. My sister, who lives in L.A., now drives the car. 
and uh, she saw mine. She loved it so much that she got the same car as, as I have. And um, my husband drives a BMW as well. But I, I'm so s stuck on that car. I don't think I'll ever, I'll get a new one, but I'm not going to get a different one. <laughs> a BMW family. I'm sitting with Annie Blake from Death and Glory Restaurant. You got to come and check this place out just for the nostalgia of it. Come by, have a drink. But as soon as you see the menu, you're going to want something. All right. Once again, Club Brayman. This is Danny Bayard for Club Brayman Spotlight. See you soon. Thank you, Danny. It's been you. a pleasure. Thank it's you. It's been our pleasure, too. Wow, what a place. It was incredible. Uh, each of those little rooms had a special little ambiance to it. So it's great. Very, very interesting. What do we have next, Danny? I went to this fascinating place, hidden. You don't know where you're going until you get there. And they do a fabulous job <laughs> with some superior art. So Lainey Lewis, uh, Porsche owner, actually took us on a tour, showed us some artwork. What they do is basically restore artwork. It's a concern. Let's just watch this segment because it is fabulous. Look forward to this. Let's go. Club Brayman members, I'm sitting with Lainey Lewis from the Fine Arts Conservancy, and I've got to tell you, this is a fascinating place, and you're going to enjoy this segment. We are sitting in front of a particular restored piece of art that's actually uh, true in nature. Can you tell us a little bit about this, Lainey? Yes, this is a watercolor, and that's unique because watercolors are not usually not this large. This is 101 inches in length by uh, 59 inches, and that's big Huge. for watercolor. Yes. It is, it is, but it's made out of two sheets of, of paper that were put together, and it was painted in 1888, and that's another unique thing about it. It was, it's a uh, painting of the Battle of Freeland, Napoleon's battle, and it was done by a French artist who, who wanted to do five p major paintings of Napoleon's battles, but he only got a few accomplished. The oil of this is in the Metropolitan Museum, and it was wow. painted first. Usually the watercolor comes first and then the oil, but in this case it was, it was reversed. It, exactly. You know, I took the liberty of uh, Googling or going on Wikipedia, and yeah, it was a battle. It was uh, fought in uh, uh, June of 1807. It was the Battle of Friedland. It was very decisive. This was actually what ended the hostilities between Russia and France, wow. which I didn't know. So thank <laughs> you for bringing this. And what's amazing is that I think you said these were real, real characters, right? They're, yeah. They're real. Yeah. Well, they actually had photos that I was able to compare. And in this grouping right here, uh, we've got Nicolas Ojuno, was a general. We've got uh, General Etienne de Nansouci. And we also have uh, Field Marshal Michelle Ney out of this grouping right here. So it, it's a fascinating photo. Tell us what you did to it. How did it come to you? It came to us from a private collection. And it was be, it's being moved down to South Florida and they wanted to take care of it, which is great because we love people that take care of their artwork. And they were- Owner to remain unnamed, of course. That is right. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. And, the, the challenge was, when it comes in, in this environment from another environment, we have to keep it stable. Okay. And we don't want any of the envir in, environmental issues that we have here in Florida, such as mold, mm -hmm. to affect the piece. Now that would be major. It would be really major. But just a little backstory for you. Uh -huh. uh, Gordon Lewis is a partner in the business, and he came up with the idea of if, if artwork had its own environment, mm -hmm then it could travel, it could go to museum exhibitions, and we wouldn't have to worry about what the temperature was going to be like, what the humidity was okay. going to be like. We're going to just seal it all in. So that's what he came up with. And so now, this many years later, it's kind of, I, I'm not going to say the standard in, mm -hmm. in uh, frame, the framing industry, but it certainly is something that the conservators recommend and do. So that's what we did on this. We and put, Gordon has been a pioneer in this sort of uh, restoration and preservation of these uh, fine arts works. Absolutely. And it has its own challenges because what we do is called a microclimate or a seal system. Mm -hmm. So we are actually sealing in the, the correct level of humidity. Wow. We conditioned the room and all of the materials that we were going to use for several days at the right temperature. 
and we kept it that way. Even even scissors that we were cutting the tape with, even screwdrivers. It's that meticulous. It has to be because we didn't want to change any any of the temperature, and the temperature was holding in the humidity. And it has to also stay away from the glazing. The glazing in this case is Optium Museum Acrylic that's okay. made by TrueView. And it is amazing because it, it has no reflections or the most minimal amount of reflections we have today. It has the UV properties that one needs to preserve the colors. Mm -hmm. And that's at 99% plus it has the reflective uh, qualities we need of clarity so that you can see the artwork. Because Who knew 200 years ago <laughs> that somebody would be sitting here and the artist is saying or thinking, is that possible 200 years later? I know. Uh, it, it's, I, I it's, know. It it's, gives me goose chills. This frame, is that the original frame? I don't know if it's the original frame to the watercolor, but it is definitely, uh, like I said, it has the attributions of Napoleon. Hard to pull myself away from this because it's <laughs> fabulous. Tell us some of the other pieces that you have here. This is a great project that we worked on. It is uh, belonged to a, a family in Charleston, South Carolina. And you can see the, the one on the left with the hole, holes is the way it came into us. This is a traditional landscape format, even though it's a seascape. It's of, of an island, a Dutch island in the Caribbean. And it was brought to us, as I said, it had been in the family, and they wanted to have it restored. So we took on the challenge, and there is no canvas behind these holes, so we didn't really know what, what was supposed to have been there. But by the time we got our research done, we were able to figure out the, what the tower looked like on the castle on the fortress and what the boats look like. Well, now I understand there's some exciting news. A Picasso? We've got a Picasso that we're getting ready to frame. It's a beautiful print. You know, there are lots of, uh, Picasso had worked in all mediums, uh, ceramics, oils, he went, and he was a wonderful printmaker. And this one that we're getting ready to frame in a very special frame is, uh, is one of his well-known prints. This is incredible. This is like a candy store for art lovers. Um, the one in front of me, what is that? That's a Salvador Dali painting, and it is a painting. It's a, it's a work on paper. Uh, art is in, uh, kind of in a hierarchy, if you will. There, there are paintings, which are usually canvas with oil or acrylic, and then there are drawings, which are on paper, and it's usually paint, uh, pencil, charcoal, or watercolor. This is acrylic on paper, but because it's acrylic, it makes it a painting. And it's here for condition. Uh, it's important that a, that a person who owns art, whether you consider yourself a collector, an art buyer, or just someone who, who owns paintings, to, to have them looked at by a conservator to do a proper condition report so that you have a baseline. Okay because condition influences the value of the piece. So besides uh, restoration work mm -hmm. uh, and, and all these fantastic things you take from, a, uh, fr from nothing to a lot, what else do you do at the Conservancy? We, we do specialized framing as well. Okay. And we also do fine art appraisals. And it's interesting, we're working on that Buddha over there and our, our challenge on that was to take off the granite Buddha, uh, the granite base that was on it, uh -huh. and and now we're building another one for it. But the challenge is that's from the 10th century. Wow! And vibrations, <laughs> you know, we can't have any <laughs> vibrations, and yet we had to get this hard material off without vibrating the piece. Now you are located in a secret location that I can't even say. We are. Uh, you're soon going to give the contact information of how to get in touch with you if you're a client. Your clients are mostly in South Florida or uh, they're, around they're, the country. It, it's a mix. Okay. Be, um, mostly, but yeah, mostly South Florida, I would say, because a lot of times it's uh, it's it's local in the sense that you so that you're not shipping pieces around. And there's so many good collections here, and there's so much good material here that it has become a, a, uh, 
a wealth of, of art. It's a good art center. So if I have a piece of art that needs some restoration, mm -hmm. how do I get in touch with you, Lainey? You can call us or you can send us an email or you can go onto our website and just uh, upload the photographs and get in touch with us that way. Very good. So you'll notice on, on the screen we've got the website address. We also have the telephone number and the contact information for Lainey Lewis. This has been Danny Bayard with Laney Lewis in the Fine Arts Conservancy, and it has been a fascinating tour. Always been my pleasure. <laughs> I love talking about it. <laughs> and I love being here. <laughs> Great. We'll see you guys next time. Great. Thank you. Larry, Master's Art, your art, you couldn't be in any better hands than Laney Lewis and the Fine Arts yeah, Conservancy. Phenomenal spots. Yeah. Danny, I noticed you've got a, a wristband on. Did you run late at your lunch at Monroe's? This is my one. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. This is my I Wednesday. I got a scissor in the, uh, you know, in the desk. This is serious stuff. Serious. This is I, my I, I Wednesday, know. okay, uh, wristband. Every morning, every employee, all 450-something of us, have to go get our temperature checked, make sure that we're good to go to work. You have to have one of these to step on the property, and that's in conjunction with mandatory face mask, right sanitizing the automobiles as they sure. come in and go out, uh, and a number of safety measures that they promote here at Bremen Motor. Every day, a different color, safety compliance. Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, I'm going to have a flashback for you right after this. What are you waiting for? It's the final days of summer at Bremen Motor Cars. Save thousands on 1,000 vehicles located on seven indoor floors. Choose from BMW, Mini, Porsche, and pre-owned cars from economy to exotic. Enjoy exceptional offers, zero down and zero payments for up to six months. The final days of summer, now at Bremen Motor Cars. Come in or buy online at BremenMotorCars.com. Bremen Motor Cars, we deliver. Danny, we got the favorite part of the show coming up now. Another flashback. And I got one picked out for you. I'll bet you do. Wine and paint, remember those days? Oh boy. We bring in some wine, we have some cheese, some food, and of course, we've got a professional painter that shows our Club Bremen members how to paint. So by the time you get in there, you get a blank canvas. That's great. You go out with a beautiful painting. What a biggie. What a memory. Crowd loved it. Packed. One into of my the favorite, theater. you know, uh, parts of Club Bremen, you know, along uh, with uh, Casino Royale. I mean, you, you could name a few of those. Casino Royale, Comedy Nights, Business to Business Nights, Latin Nights, Latin Nights, Italian Nights. We'll be back. You know, we will be back. Larry, you guys did a great job. Uh, yeah. You, Ron Brooks, uh, Joseph, and uh, Mark at putting together those uh, great team those collaboration. Yeah, they will be. Uh, back. We miss it. Yeah. But, so uh, here we go. Without further ado. Wine and paint.
Great memories. I loved it. That event in particular, you know, just one of my favorites. They're, they're all fabulous, but that is one of the favorites. Yes. A lot of fun. I, I want to go back for a second now, uh -huh. Danny, to the wristband. Shouldn't I, have, shouldn't I have received one Larry, you know, coming into the, uh, the, uh, the campus? Larry, you're a vendor. You did go through a procedure. Uh -huh. Back door, different procedure the old entirely. Vendor. But you are, you are safe. I had to park two blocks away at drive time. Uh -huh. I had a walk. And let's just say it wasn't the most pleasant experience. But uh Danny, I'd like to put it behind me. I would also. Visit clubraymond.com to take the easy three question quiz about this show to win one of 20 prizes. Next time, you're, we're going to have a great show again, Larry. All right. What do we got We've coming got up? Another Club Raymond member restaurant. Great. All right. That'll be appearing. And also, you're going to learn a lot about wines and spirits. So I know you love that. that. Club Raymond Spotlight <laughs> for Larry and myself. Uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>